Okay, Linda, uh, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> I know last year at your presentation uh, that you did for Audiology Online, uh, you were um, you did most of the presentation was about auditory neuropathy. Um, is that an area you think you might be presenting on again this year? Well, I um, I probably will have something about auditory neuropathy. It's an area that I'm very interested in, and something that we're learning a lot about every day. Uh, there's still an awful lot to learn, a lot that we don't understand. So uh, there's a lot of literature developing, a lot of things to follow with that. And we're doing some work here too as well that I might work into that. So uh, I think that that will be one thing that I'd like to touch on, uh, just because it's on my mind all the time. But I actually just came back from the ARO meeting, uh, it's a big hearing research meeting, and uh, there was just so much exciting things there. Um, I'm especially interested in some of the developments in otoacoustic emissions. There's a lot going on. I think our understanding of OAEs is really changing a lot. Uh, we're getting into more of the detail of what's happening and what they can tell us about what's going on in, in different functions in the ear. So I, I may want to include a few things about that. Um, with the what's happening with OAEs, is that sort of now basic research, or are there some things that will find their way into the clinic? Well, I think they'll find their way into the clinic. Uh, one example of that is uh, that we've learned that OAEs have different sources within the ear, and there's uh, something called a two-source model that looks at different components of OAEs. And one of the things we've learned is that one of those components actually is, is more vulnerable uh, than others. Other people have looked at this. We actually uh, did one study in my lab right here uh, where uh, one of my former PhD students, Chris Spankovich, uh, looked at function in uh, people with diabetes and found that uh, this new approach is really more sensitive than what we're using clinically. Uh, we're also learning things about maturation, various labs working on that, and we're going to be starting a study looking uh, at some of the aging effects related to that as well. So. Uh, I think it's something that uh, as we learn more, it will work its way into the clinic. Everything takes a while. Sure. But and and we'll speaking of that, that. Is, is there actually equipment uh, that's commercially available now that, that do some of these special tests, or is that down the road a bit? There's some that I think is approaching that, and some of the measures... Uh, are available you know, through either equipment or research versions of equipment. Uh, what we're using right now is, is pretty much lab-based, but with technology that we have available. I think as uh, the applications emerge and the need for it emerges, I think it'll be a pretty easy transition. Oh, sounds great. You know, you, you mentioned your own research here, and I, I know you've had several projects in the past and several projects going on right now. Could you give us a a short review or mention a couple of the more exciting things maybe that are happening right here at Vandy? <laughs> Uh, well, as, as I mentioned, you know, we're looking at some of the things related to otoacoustic emissions in diabetes, and we've also used OAEs and, again, more sensitive approaches, uh, something that kind of picks apart the, the different components of both OAEs as well as neural responses, uh, efferent responses through suppression of OAEs, as well as uh, auditory brainstem response, to look for abnormalities and subtle kinds of differences in carriers of genetic mutations. So we're continuing that work um, here in my lab as well as with some other labs. Uh, also, our efferent studies, uh, a few years ago, we found some changes as people get older, particularly uh, if we activate the efferent system binaurally. So uh, I have one student now that's going to be probing that a bit more. Uh, we continue to have interest in development and neuromaturation. Um, now we're looking especially at medically compromised infants and NICU infants. And through the course of this, also trying to develop some measures that hopefully will find their way into the clinic. 
That sounds great. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, I think um, you'll be on in October, I, I believe think it so. is. I and think so. any final tips you want to give us about something we should be looking forward to in October? Well, I think that I, I certainly will look forward to this. It was a lot of fun last year, and uh, I think that we'll just see where the literature leads us. Okay, thank you.